Francisco, who's joining us from Paraguay. Um, so many people have asked us about the topic that um, he wants to ask about. So I believe this is something that will uh, resonate with so many people. So Francisco, eh, tu pregunta, bienvenido. ¿Cuál es tu pregunta? Uh, saludo celestial en el nombre de Jesucristo aquí desde Paraguay. So um, Francisco's question is about eh, the issue of fasting. O sea, mi, mi so he said that um, there's a confusion, you know, eh, existing bueno, for him and he believes for so many people because is it that when only when God leads us we should fast or maybe when we're um, in a specific state of intimacy and closeness with God we should fast or is it in specific occasions we should fast so he, he really wants some um, guidance from God in, in terms of the issue of fasting for your question it's a practical question you know, uh, there's a practical side of Christianity that the things that are what we call articles of faith, a practicing Christian must apply them. Prayer, fasting is one of them. So the question is, prayer and fasting are things of the spirit. It's a spiritual thing. So you must be guided led by the Holy Spirit to do them in spirit and in truth. Jesus was led by the Spirit in Matthew chapter 5 to go and fast for 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness, led by the Spirit of God. Moses, Exodus chapter 34 verse 28. Moses stood in the presence of God 40 days, 40 nights without eating and drinking. When Saul, who we know as Paul in the book of Acts chapter 9, when he had an encounter with Jesus and became blind, the scripture says, Acts chapter 9, verse 9, that for three days, Paul never ate, never drank anything. Right? So now the question of fasting. What is fasting? That's the real question. Fasting must be done in the spirit and in truth. If you are doing it by yourself, you are the one doing it on your own. But fasting must have a motivation. Why do I fast? I don't fast for selfish, classic, and material reason. I don't fast because I need money. I don't fast to pull God to my mind, to force God to do things. No. You must have a motivation to fast. And fasting and prayer, they go together. Fasting is an attitude of your heart towards God. If, for example, somebody is experiencing difficult things, you want to change in this life, you want to change. You say, I don't like the life I live, what is wrong with me? I can't succeed in trouble. You, you realize there's something wrong. And you want to seek the face of God for that. Attitude of humility. You pray, but you must, be, you must listen to your heart, listen to your conscience. If your heart gives you an inner conviction from God to fast, that fasting will never be a burden for you. You will not hunger strike. You can fast for three days. I'm telling you, you will not even feel it. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you don't feel it. That's why Moses was able to say 40 days, 40 nights. But if you try, don't try to do it in the flesh, it's not wise at all. You can affect your body and create trouble. If your health will not allow you to fast, you have to be careful. You do things you do by yourself. You'll be led by the Spirit of God to do them. There are things of the Spirit. It must be done in spirit and in truth. The question is, how does God judge fasting? You know you are fasting and you don't know you are fasting. Fasting in the Spirit is not food. You fast from God's point of view when you stay away from sin. When you stay away from what is bad, what is sin, you are fasting, really. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 58, from verse 1 to 3. Let's see God's point of view about the fasting that God recognizes and God acknowledges. So, let's see. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. I think it's from verse... Yes. Let me start from verse 3. He said, Why have we fasted? They say... And you have not seen. They are blaming God. 
Because they fasted and didn't see any result. They fasted and God didn't answer. They said, God, <laughs> we are fasted and you have not taken notice. You see, in fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. God is the one talking. And you exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate. You see, and, and to strive with the, with the what? Sorry? For, with the feast of wickedness. Means fasting, real fasting, must imply a change of attitude. When you are fasting, you fast in righteousness. When you fast and after you begin to quarrel, to fight, to have negative thoughts, what kind of fast is that before Jesus? He said, in the last that I've chosen, a day for a man is afflicted his soul. Afflicted his soul. Take note of that. That's the real fasting God is talking about. Fast cannot work without the resolution of change of heart and change of character. When Nineveh, in the book of Jonah, it was a very bad city. They were living contrary to God's standard. And one day God sent Jonah to go and prophesy to them that I'm going to bring destruction on this city. When they heard it, the scripture says everybody fasted to the animals. When they fasted because they knew their attitude wasn't good, they were afraid fear of God, God healed it. And God changed the situation immediately. So, fasting must be done in spirit and in truth, led by the spirit with the right motivation. If somebody fasts because you want money, no, we don't put God to our mind. Let the spirit of God guide you to fast. Let your heart prompt you to fast. All the act of giving, act of fasting and praying must be inspired by the Holy Spirit from your heart, from conviction. The scripture says, let everybody be convinced in his whole heart. Romans chapter 14 verse 5. If my heart tells me fast, 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 and listen to my heart, ah, God is prompting me to fast. I will fast and I will not feel it. At the end of the fasting, God will answer me. You must be led by the Spirit. You must be convinced. And Romans chapter 14, verse 23 says, 14, 23, whatever is not of conviction of faith is sin. It's an act of faith. So why do I fast? Do I fast to force God to do something? No. God doesn't need that fasting for me. What God wants from me, a change of attitude, a change of character, humility that brings about the mercy of God. Because I'm convinced something is wrong in my life. I have played a role. I fast to ask God for mercy. I fast led by the Spirit to ask for God's strength. I fast to seek revelation from God. I fast in God's prayer. You seek the face of God, an attitude of heart. Anytime in the Old Testament, you have somebody who behaves badly and then you come, they put ashes in and they tore their clothes and, and humble themselves before God. That's an attitude of humility God is looking for fasting. Fasting goes with humility. And when you fast, you don't fight. When you fast, you want to please God. You forgive your enemy. You pray. You help the sick. You help the needy. That's the fasting God wants. So now, anytime you're in the attitude of Christ... Anytime you don't want to look at something bad. Anytime you train yourself to respond positive, positively to the situation to help those who need. You are fasting. That's the first thing God wants. And God will hear that one. Anytime I refrain myself from negative thinking, negative action, and I read my Bible, I meditate to seek the face of God, I have an attitude of casting, attitude, attitude, attitude of heart. And God will tell you when to start and when to stop. You don't fast because of calendar. Or oh, you say, you use the fasting of Daniel as a mathematical formula. It doesn't work like that. You must be led by the Spirit to do that. And Daniel was led by the Spirit to fast for 21 days. In the time of Esther, that fasting was led by the Spirit to fast. Attitude of humbling yourself before God because you need His mercy. You need His favor. You want to know Him. You fast and cry for help. God will hear your cry. I will tell you one man who fasted and God answered him without fasting in the natural. In the book, let me go to take you to the book of Acts. I will take you to the book of Acts of chapter 9. There was one man we call Acts 10. Sorry, go to verse 10. Cornelius. His case tells us 
the time of fasting Isaiah 58 is talking about. Yes. Acts chapter 10. It says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what we call the Italian regiment. He was not a believer. He was not a Hebrew. He was a Roman person. The Bible says, A devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. He was praying and a change of attitude, a change of heart, a resolution to change. He wanted to change his life. And he has a compassion look towards the needy, giving alms to the poor. What happened? He draw, that's the real fasting God is talking about. Help the weak, help the needy, do what is right. Humble yourself. That's what he did. God located him, an angel was sent to him. And the angel said, when he arrived, let me go to verse 3. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it? Lord, he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memory before God. Not just prayer. What Jesus said, Whatever you do to the least of them, that you do unto me. At the last day, Matthew 26, these people go to inherit heaven because I was naked, you closed me. I was hungry, you fed me. Whatever you do to the least out of your pure heart, that you do unto God. And that's the first thing we are talking about. When you refuse to answer back, when you refuse to insult, to do what is bad, that's the real fasting of heart. It's your heart that fasts, not your body. It's the things of the spirit. When you say, I don't want to look at negative things, I want to go to the Bible. Meditate. You are fasting. You are training yourself to think right, to deprive yourself of anything evil, to do what is right before sight of God. That is fasting. It's an attitude of heart. If you fast in the natural and God leads you to fast in the natural, that is good. Holy Ghost will guide you and you'll never suffer. It will not, it will not affect you. But if you do it on your flesh, you will affect even your health. And God will not hear you. There's no something you do on the outside. You must be led by the Spirit of God to do that. When the Spirit of God leads you to fast, I'm telling the truth, you will have joy, you will have strength. That's why Jesus said, when you fast, don't look like the hypocrites in the street showing this. Perfume your head. Nobody should see you are fasting. God see your heart. No, you are fasting. And God can lead you to say, okay, tomorrow Friday from 6 in the, in the night, 6 in the morning to 12. Don't eat. There's no time. God can lead you to fast and to stop as he wills. You can start by 8 o'clock and start by 12. Or 8 by 12. As the Spirit leads, He will lead you. If He wants you to pray and fast, He will lead you to pray and fasting. And when you are fasting, it's not stopping eating food. You have to be answered to prayer. And do what is right. Fasting alone cannot work without change of heart, resolution to do what is right, to humbling before God. If you do so for God's purpose, God will answer you. You have to be led by the Holy Ghost to do that. In things of the Spirit. We don't pull God to our mind by fasting. We bring ourselves to Him for mercy. The prayer God wants to hear, mercy, humility. God answers them all. A contrite heart, God blesses. We don't bargain with God. Don't treat with God. Don't do any act of righteousness to force God to do something. God does things according to His will in our lives. But when you are seeking the face of God for direction, for future, for your life, you can be at your attitude of heart to fast for God's mercy and favor. And I do believe if you're led by the Holy Ghost, you will see the answer from God. Thank you. Amen. Yes, it's all about putting your attention on God, mm -hmm. taking your attention off yourself, putting it on God, and uh, fasting is an expression of that. And the right motivation. We, exactly, with the right motivation. The motivation is, not that I want to get something from God, I want God's mercy. I need God's mercy. I want to change. Because it's the motivation of our heart that God is looking at. 
And like Rasim was saying, you know, we've heard it so many times that you can say, oh, I, you know, Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Therefore, me too, I want to fast 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus also walked on water. But we don't say we want to do that one. Why? Because it's impossible without the Spirit of God. In the same way, we should be led by the Spirit of God as believers in Christ Jesus. So that whatever we're doing, it's the Spirit that's, that's praying through us, the Spirit that's, that's enabling us to do that. And... Wow, thank you so much for your question. Thank you. You inspired me. <laughs> so I said, the best fast you can do is when you choose to, to deprive yourself from fleshly tendencies, worth you think, and choose to read your Bible and to meditate and ask for mercy. Oh, my Lord, that's the first thing God wants you to do. And uh, by the way, just in case you're asking, uh, when is Rasin going to talk more about meditation? Don't worry. We know that so many people have asked for a practical example of meditation, and we're going to have a separate session just for that because that is a huge topic, and we know that people want practical examples. 